Hello YouTube. I'll talk about a very interesting subject. It has to do with the so-called magic or Chinese mirrors. But are they magic and are they only Chinese? Well, these mirrors are well known to archaeologists and lovers of ancient artifacts. But few people know that they have like a mysterious optical effect. If you catch a ray of the sun with it, then a drawing applied to the mirror will appear in its reflection. At the same time, it becomes voluminous. That is, it is like a kind of third 3D cinema from ancient times. But the most amazing thing is that the drawing is reflected not from the side that reflects the sun's rays, but from the back of the mirrors. That is, it becomes as if transparent. No one has managed to explain such an effect intelligibly so far. But there are some explanations, and I'll get to them. There are photos of numerous Chinese mirrors stored in museums and collectors on the web, but most likely these keepers are not even aware of the strange properties of the artifacts they own. However, it is possible that some of them are actually those mirrors are later forgeries that do not have the magical properties. Apparently the Chinese mirrors have not been studied extensively. It looks that they have some other properties that we don't know about. Perhaps this is some kind of technological device left over from ancient civilizations. And note that some of the drawings on the mirrors are quite difficult to determine. What exactly is depicted? In, in those images. There are mirrors that have properties that are hard to believe until you see them with your own eyes. And they appeared long before the great Russian poet Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin came up with a mirror capable of both seeing what is very far and um, telling the people who look at it about what is depicted, actually what is in the mirror. Let's see. It goes like this. In her dowry, rich and vast, was a little looking glass. It has this unique distinction. It could speak with perfect diction. Only with this glass would she, in a pleasant humor, be. That's from Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin, the tale of the dead princess and the seven knights. So, the following um, mysterious story about the magic mirror is connected with two probably the most mysterious personality of the past, the soothsayers or clairvoyants, Michel Nostradamus and Count Saint Germain. There are legends that the Count had a huge number of magical things. One of the most amazing among them was a mirror. Looking into it, you could see all the events of the future and find out your own fate, which the Count successfully did, gaining fame as a magician. According to legends, um, this mirror once belonged to Nostradamus himself also, who thanks to him made, his famous, made him famous and he made astounding predictions. There is an entry in the diary of Catherine de Michi in from, who claimed that Nostradamus showed her this mysterious object. There were pictures of some festivities, fires and streams of blood. It was the night of Saint Bartholomew. Then the deathbed appeared, a magnificent royal, the face of a man, but with female earrings and necklaces. It was Henry III. Then someone's big shadow appeared in the mirror. It is not known by what ways the mirror got later to Saint Germain, who looked through it into the future and amazed people with his predictions. It is also unclear where it got to afterwards. The traces of the Saint Germain mirror are lost somewhere in the past. It doesn't mean the mirror is lost. Now, I will tell you about some Kiev legends. This is the city I was born in and lived in my youth in the Soviet Union. This city has ancient history and has many secrets and legends in its past. I lived in the Padol or Padil area, depending on the language you use, Russian or Ukrainian. It was a very old part of town. 
and I have found interesting artifacts in the hills next to the dilapidated building where our, our communal apartment was located and I knew a lot uh, of secretive places around the area um, including uh, venturing into the forbidden tunnels it, it wasn't safe to go there so they blocked them I was a boy who loved adventure and Kiev is imbued with history including occasional artifacts sometimes explosives sometimes just daggers and swords from a number of invasions and wars and more more artifacts of a strange variety and by the way those who built recently wonderful residential communities in the Padol neighborhood may not realize what is in the soil below someday I'll tell you more about really strange aspects of the history of my city Kiev but today, today I want to limit myself to mirrors it is a very curious that according to ancient sources there was a similar amazing magic mirror so to say in the old Kievan Rus or Kievan Russia state in 1584 the Polish priest Martin Grunewald visited Kiev about which he left notes in his diary he visited the Saint Sophia um, temple I guess that's how you uh, translate a church where he saw a kind of the magic mirror stone this is what Grunewald writes a large green stone like a mirror is placed above the large church doors there is a wonderful legend about it among the people namely that in this mirror you can see what was considered secret and different stories are told about it okay again Saint Sophia Church in Kiev now the Austrian diplomat Erich Lasota also visited Kiev 10 years later he wrote down his impression in detail in a diary which is now kept in the town of Budishin in Saxony among other interesting notes there is an entry about the Sophia uh, which has no equal in vastness Lasota writes literally the following at the top is a gallery or choir um, whose railings from one column to another consist of solid slabs of bluish stone with transparent carving in one of the slabs located directly op opposite of the main altar there is a round hole about half a cubit in diameter now filled with lime it is said that a mirror was placed in it in which by means of witchcraft one could see everything one intended even at a distance of several hundred miles as we can see the mirror has already disappeared somewhere in those 10 years that passed Lasota also tells a legend about the magic property of the mirror but it happened that one of the key of princes went to war with the pagans and was absent for a long time his wife usually looked into this mirror every day day wanting to know what he was doing and how her master was doing but one day having seen among other things that he was in a loving relationship with a captive pagan girl she broke the mirror in anger however let the authenticity of the story lie on the responsibility of tradition so this is already very reminiscent of the mirror from Pushkin's fairy tale who knows maybe he also heard this legends know that this round hole from the mysteriously missing mirror can still be seen in the Sophia church and what about Russia on the territory of that country there is a place that few people know about but which keeps many s mysteries including those related to mirrors this place is called the Minusinsk Basin or, or Hakas Minusinsk Basin it is located in Siberia 300 kilometers south of Krasnoyarsk asp stream of the Yenisei if you visit Siberia and you are in the neighborhood uh, maybe you can stop by and look at some of the wonderful things that have been discovered and are yet to be discovered listen to me surprisingly in these harsh places archaeologists have found traces of cultures created by indigenous we think people since the 14th century BC I will shed more light on that area because I will mention it, its paranormal phenomena in my videos about Siberia. 
So, between the large mountainous countries of southern Siberia, from the Taiga Kuznetsk Alatau in the north, to the high blue hazy Sayan Mountains in the south, at absolute altitudes from 200 to 700 meters, there is a mysterious corner that has long been inhabited by people, the Hakask Minusings Basin. It is a plowed fertile steppe, like savanna, with the richest deposits of coal. Experts attribute the formation of this territory to the Devonian geological period of the Paleozoic, which lasted from 410 to 360 million years. In this part of the planet then uh, began, by geological standards, a prolonged immersion of the Earth's surface. At the same time, the crystalline basis of the territory is being fragmented into separate blocks, which gradually led to the separation of different sections of the intermountain basin, which have been preserved even now. The formation of the tectonic trough was accompanied by active volcanism throughout. In the entire Siberian territory, this place has the mildest climate. Warm summers, warm summers that allow apricots and cherries to ripen, but this also differs in severe winter frosts. Siberian Italy, it is that's how some exquisitely called the Minusinsk region for its natural wealth. The area is surrounded by hills and mountains that protect from ventilation. The Minusinsk basin is surrounded by impassable terrain in the tight embrace of China only and Mongolia. The lands in the Minusinsk intermountain basin are very interesting for archaeologists and significantly help historians to restore the parts of Siberia in the Minusinsk Basin, located in the valley of the Yenisei and Chulim rivers, there are 15,000 archaeological sites. Um, the basin, or the hollow as could be translated, is famous for its archaeological complexes and various traces of human habitation here from the Paleolithic times to the Middle Ages. Why don't you look at some of the uh, ancient rock drawings that I have accompanying this video. Look at the images. Tell me what you see in them. Uh, is it only terrestrial images that you can get from looking at them? Menusing's Basin, an archaeological treasure trove of the south of Siberia, unique monuments of Siberian history. For example, rock paintings, stone figures of various animals, and other unknown creatures. All these are traces of various civilizations living here in different periods, from the Paleolithic to the Middle Ages. Like I said, it is one of the few places in the world where numerous iconic archaeological sites have actually been preserved. It is often called a unique sacred center, a cultural oasis similar to, the, to those uh, the centers of ancient civilizations, an open-air museum, a reserve of the ancient world. In St. Petersburg, the Hermitage Museum houses the famous gold hoard of the first century BC, made up of the gold jewelry by ancient masters. Wherever you go along the steppe roads of Hakassia, you will come across mounds everywhere. The appearance of mounds is associated with ancient ceremonial burials. We call, uh, we call it Kurgan Mound. Until now, researchers have found in the Minusings Basin ancient traces of Chinese and Central Asian trade caravans passing here, as well as evidence of the raids of the nomadic troops of the great Genghis Khan, ruler of the universe. Traces of the life of various ancient peoples have been found here. Settlements of the Afanasyev, Andronova, Akunevskaya, Tagar, Karasuk, and Tashtik cultures. For about 300 years, archaeologists have been studying ancient mines, preserved remains of Siberian dwellings, burial grounds, ruins of ancient fortresses, irrigation canals, and petroglyphs of people who lived in that area from the also from 3rd millennium BC to the 1st millennium AD. 
archaeologists exploring this area were particularly interested in the samples of art of the ancient inhabitants of the basin. Numerous figures of stone warriors, of animals and fantastic beasts have been found here. These priceless samples of ancient art attracted the first scientists, archaeologists to these extraordinary, mysterious places. So when you hear about South America and the ancient discoveries there, this is great. But our world is bigger and you can find much more when you come to Siberia, areas like that, or to China. Great Eurasia contains so much. Many archaeological sites have been discovered in the Minnesota area. Look, some stone figures have a specific appearance of flat and rather high granite steles or stone markers. Others rise above this step with four meter high reliefs. Look at them. Look at the description, at the drawings there. The genuine interest of archaeologists is attracted by a whole group of tall stone markers with pronounced animal faces and original headdresses, very interesting headdresses. In this group, among others, is a large stel that stands out, called by specialist Sherinskaya Baba. The stone marker apparently was an ancient, highly revered totem in the very center of its, the face of the so-called man-beast framed by exquisite ornament it was made by unknown craftsmen under this disguise the grinning and furious muzzle of the beast is carved in stone above the green a rather artfully carved human face is visible all the images look like a very harmonious artistic composition that hides its sacred secret the production of bronze, according to historians, was there in the 3rd millennium BC. That's earlier than in China. There's a hypothesis that the Huns who destroyed ancient Rome came from these places. For us, for today's video, the most interesting thing is that more than 360 ancient bronze mirrors belonging to different eras have been found in the Minusings Basin. Was there some kind of cult of mirrors here for thousands of years or something else? We just don't know. Just as we don't know how much more will be discovered in that area. When studying the mirrors of the Minusings Basin, historians, of course, did not pay attention to their front side, covered with a layer of oxides, but were engaged in drawings and inscriptions on the reverse side. And in museums, these mirrors lie face down. It never occurs to anyone that there might be a secret hidden under a layer of patina. Museum staff try to keep things in the shape in which they came to them. And the proposal to polish the front side of the mirror, which is a thousand years old or more, sounds blasphemous to them. But if among the 190 antique bronze mirrors stored in the Minusings Museum of Local Lore, there are those whose front side is sli slightly convex then there is a high probability that these are magic mirrors and polishing can reveal their secret. The museum is well guarded, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> they, they know what they have, I'm sure, the local authorities. In 2001, Russian scientist Kalinin published a very curious article in the fabulous Nauka i Zizn, or Science and Life magazine. He accidentally heard that in ancient temples in China, there are mirrors that can show where Buddha lives. At the same time, Kalinin wrote a letter about this to his friend, a puzzle lover, a professor at a university in Nanjing. But the friend replied that he had not heard anything about such things. Years passed and suddenly his old Chinese friend, whose name is San Yangzi, and who was 70 years old, in 2001, said that he wanted to send Kalinin a Chinese bronze mirror as a gift, which um, which the uh, Russian scientist asked about once. If this mirror is directed at the sun and the reflected sun puddle, 
Солнечный зайчик in Russian. Sun puddle is English. Well, if the reflected sun puddle is on a white wall or a sheet of paper, then an image will appear on them that is not on the polished front side of the mirror. Sun puddle is a bright warm spot on the floor or other surface created by the sun streaming through a window, for example. Soon a package arrived with a round bronze plate with a diameter of 7 cm, polished on the front side so that it could be used as a mirror. The front side of the mirror was slightly convex and the back side was decorated with a bas relief with hieroglyphs covered with patina, green oxides that occur on old bronze objects. You can understand Kalinin's excitement when he pointed the mirror at the sun and put a piece of paper under the sunbeam. On the paper he saw an image, not of Buddha, but only hieroglyphs. But he did see them. The image was there. What does science say about magic mirrors from China? It turned out that dozens of articles and books have been written on this topic. The first report was published in the British Philosophical Journal in 1832, and the vast article about unusual mirrors can be read on the internet today, from what I heard, I'm not sure. And almost every author believed that he had found the answer to the mystery. Then a scientific work with a new ver uh, hypothesis appeared, and therefore, for most scientists, magic mirrors remain a mystery to this day. In the homeland of these mirrors, in China, they are covered with the glory of ancient legends. One of them says, once the emperor's wife was sitting in the garden on a sunny day and doing her usual thing, admiring herself in a bronze mirror. Then she lowered it to her knees, a ray of sunlight reflected from the mirror onto the white wall of the palace, and an image of a dragon appeared in a bright circle on the wall. The drawing of the dragon exactly repeated the relief of the back of the mirror. This was the first time the magical property of Chinese mirrors was discovered. Since then, the magic mirrors have been called transparent bronze mirrors in China, and the origin of the Chinese proverb, the truth always comes out in the sun, is explained by those mirrors. Bronze, an alloy of copper, lead, and tin, was invented in China 2000 BC, but the oldest of the magic mirrors found dates back to 500 AD, according to the Russian scientist. It was discovered during the excavation of the tomb of a, noble, of a nobleman in southern China. The next mirror was in the tomb of the emperor of the Tang dynasty, who died around 950 AD. With him in the, in the same grave were 26 of his wives, aged uh, from the 13 years old to 26 years old, who had no right to live after the death of their husband, the emperor. Well, times change. And there's only one magic mirror for all the wives. That's how few mirrors were in existence then. Just a few mirrors. Okay? But 500 years later, during the reign of the Ming Dynasty, uh, from 1368 to 1644, magic mirrors have ceased to be a rarity for the rulers of China, and mirrors of that era can now be seen in the largest museums of the world. Perhaps the secret of the appearance of the image and the mirror was not known to the Chinese craftsmen themselves. The fact is that, on average, only one out of a hundred mirrors made showed magical abilities. The first attempts to explain their cause were made in the 11th century by Chinese scientist Shen Kua. He believed that when casting, the thinner part of the mirror cools down faster than the thicker one, which leads to small invisible to the eye curvatures of the surface. Ancient Chinese poets gave their own poetic explanations of the transparency of metal mirrors. This explanation to the poet Qin Ma, for example, were enough for an entire poem. The Englishman John Swinton in the first European, was the first European known to us who observed a magic mirror. He bought it somewhere in 1831-1832 in India, in Calcutta, where, he got, where it got from China. 
and immediately sent a mirror to England to David Brewster. Sir David Brewster, um, who um, lived, within, lived between 1781 to 1868, was a Scottish physicist known for his discoveries in the field of light polarization. By the way, he invented a toy that uh, we have loved since childhood, a kaleidoscope, and he was the author of several other optical toys. Sir David examined the resulting mirror and published a report in the Philosophical Journal. The report began with this, with the message that this mirror surprised amateurs and confused the philosophers of Calcutta. And then Sir David would reveal this secret. In his opinion, the image generated by the mirror is not connected with the drawing on the reverse side, but is applied with a weak acid solution to the front surface, after which it is polished. In conclusion, he recommended organizing the production and sale of such mirrors in England, which would be a very profitable business. But instead of mirrors, according to his recipe, other scientific reports with other recipes appeared in Europe. In 1844, the famous French astronomer Arago, one of the creators of the photographic process, spoke about magic mirrors at a meeting of the French Academy of Sciences. In Paris, besides Arago, the famous mathematician Marquis de Lagrange already had such a mirror. Okay? A sensational article, as they would say now, um, was published in the popular German magazine Garden Gazebo in 1877 by the then famous writer Carus Stern. He found a phrase from the Roman writer Aulus Gellius, who lived in the 2nd to 3rd centuries AD, about mirrors, some of which reflect their reverse side and some do not. Stern also unearthed the records of the Italian historian Muratori that a magic mirror was found under the pillow of a bishop from Verona who was later sentenced to death. And finally, in the same article, it was reported that in an ancient Chinese book dating back to the 9th century AD, there is a mention of magic mirror. But in the vicinity of China in Japan, events developed differently. In Japanese sources from ancient times to the second half of the 19th century, no mention of magic mirrors was found. But already in the middle of that century, mirrors made in Japan were brought to Europe. Apparently, Japanese craftsmen, craftsmen managed to get a manufacturing method from China or learned how to make them themselves. In 1877, a whole exhibition of magic mirrors from Japan was organized in London. At the beginning of the 20th century, most scientists from both the West and the East believed that the magic mirror was made in the following way. After casting, the master or craftsman first processed the back of the mirror with a steel tool, making the relief pattern more quali qualitative. Then he placed the mirror on the table with the back side down and began to polish the front side, pressing hard on it. At the same time, the thinner parts of the mirror, located above the depressions of the relief, bent slightly and were less exposed to abrasive. After polishing, they straightened and slightly protruded above the middle level of the mirror. As a result, figures from convex micro mirrors appeared on the front surface, corresponding to the relief of the image on the reverse side of the product. According to scientists, these micro mirrors were supposed to form an image inside the sunbeam. The explanation sounded, sounded authoritative, but no one could show at least one mirror made in Europe or America using this or any other way, any other method. And in China, they have already found a magic mirror with a diameter of 52 centimeters, weighing more than 12 kilograms and 1.3 centimeters thick. thick. With such a thickness of the bronze layer, the explanation of European scientists looked unconvincing.
But it was not this giant mirror that caused the confusion of specialists. But the fact that mirrors were found whose drawings in the sun puddle did not correspond to the relief on the back of the mirror. For example, in one Buddhist temple, a mirror was kept on the back of which the moon is depicted shining over the sea. And in the reflected sunbeam on the wall of the temple, there was a shape of Buddha in a lotus flower. Imagine that. The magic mirror seemed to laugh at the entire Western scientific world. New unusual finds could cause a new wave of interest in the mirror. But this did not happen, because the first and then the second world wars broke out. Apart from an article published in 1932 by the English crystallographer Sir William Bragg, there were no reports of magic mirrors in the 20th century until 1958. But the worst thing is that both in China and in Japan, mirrors stopped being produced since those few craftsmen who knew how to make them died or were killed during the wars and invasions. At the beginning of the 20th century, a new wave of interest in Chinese mirrors came about. But then, alas, like I said, the wars broke out. So, in the late 1950s, and through doubt that no one else makes magic mirrors either in China or Japan, there's no one else. Fortunately, in 1961, the Chinese Prime Minister Zhou Enlai, the great refor uh, reformer, visiting the Shanghai Museum became interested in magic mirrors and ordered their production to be restored. This work was entrusted to several universities and technical institutes. But it's one thing to give a command and quite another to execute it. Several universities and technical institutes struggled for two years to solve this problem. But alas, they did not succeed. Publications about their work appeared in the media for two years, in which mainly negative results of experiments were presented. Chinese scientists from different institutions conducted research independently. Everyone tried to find their own method and criticize colleagues. Two years later, publications stopped and new Chinese mirrors appeared which were in no way inferior to the ancient ones, according to Kalinin. And only in the third year, the magic Chinese mirrors of the latest production were revealed to the world, which were in no way inferior to the ancient ones. The images reflected by them either correspond, corresponded or did not correspond to the relief on the back of the mirror. Therefore, the old technology has been revived. But as before, the secret of manufacturing was kept in the strictest secrecy. Today, several dozen scientists are trying to unravel the secret of Chinese mirrors, but to no avail. Or if they succeeded, I have not heard about it. There are, there are at least six ways in which you can make a magic mirror, but only for some reason none of them can do it. The image reflected by them could correspond or not correspond to the relief um, on the back of the uh, mirror. Where and how the new mirrors were made and the whole history of their construction, again, were shrouded in the strictest secrecy. Um, but from the correspondence with his Chinese colleague, Kalinin learned that they are now being made in the city of Yangzhou. So, over the past century and a half, dozens of scientists have been solving the magic mirror enigma. Many of them were sure that they had managed to solve the mystery. But only in China have they learned to make mirrors equal to the ancients. The method found in modern China remains inaccessible to world science. And therefore, today, we can only list the manufacturing methods that have been offered for a century and a half, especially since each of them claims to be reliable. So Kalinin listed possible ways of producing magic mirrors. Um, well, I will again, I will read you one, for example, here. Uh, well, and I'll try to, to present as much as I can. When casting, the thinner parts of the mirror cool down faster than the thick one. 
thick thick ones which leads to the surface deformations since this since this process depends on so many factors only one or two out of a hundred mirrors seems to become magic by themselves a drawing is engraved on the front side of the mirror which is then filled with a different grade of bronze and polished a drawing is cut out on the front side of the mirror then the surface is covered with the amalgam of mercury and polished the drawing on the front side of the mirror is etched with acid or other chemicals and then polished the pattern is cut through on the back of the mirror which causes irregularities when polishing the front surface the drawing is stamped on the front side of the mirror and then the surface is polished those are the methods there may be more but i think that's enough for this presentation how many are inclined to believe that a magic mirrors can be made in different almost all of the above ways but for some reason no one can prove it but by making a mirror showing something new for example the eiffel tower ongoing scientific research gives rise to new doubts in 1999 two scientists doctors of sciences uh, Tamilian from the Vavilov State Optical Institute in Russia and J Science from the University of California cut a magic mirror to check whether there are metal inhomogeneities in the place which project the image. The new method of detecting the structural heterogeneity of the material was used using thin layers of pneumatic. Kalina did not know what it is. Pneumatic liquid crystals by observing them in polarization microscope. Results. Structural inhomogeneities of the mirror cross section surface could not be identified. And um, as is expected in science, you know, another publication about the magic mirrors appeared as a result of this tryouts. It begins like this. In the history of optics, it is hardly possible to find such an exciting mystery that can match the mystery of the magic mirrors of the East, although humanity has been struggling to explain their amazing properties for almost four millennia. It was written on the eve of the 21st century. Bronze mirrors are found in both male and female Scythians burials. Those are nomadic tribes of uh, Eurasia uh, could be actual ancestors of Russian people maybe part of the Russian people scientists argue about their purpose of those mirrors you could see your reflection in the polished surface the reverse side sometimes served as a calendar where figures or shapes of deer and a mountain goat pass the passage of time the reflection was fascinating. They believed that through mirrors communication with the other world was carried out. At the exhibition Golden Deer of Eurasia, actually it was in the United States too and other parts of the world, you, you could see a mirror in both terrestrial and sacred hypostases. A goddess with a mirror and a Scythian drinking uh, from a horn, you could see that. Uh, I think the goddess's name was uh, Tabeti and it was uh, from 350 BC she was the supreme goddess of fire and uh, she was depicted on this golden plaque from the Chertomlik uh, mound uh, in the Dnieper region actually well so we're looking at high technologies of the past and of the future you know it is curious that if in Russian poets Pushkin's time, magic mirrors were a fabulous attribute Then in our time, if you look, they're found everywhere. Uh, you know, is it possible to consider an ordinary tablet or a phone fabulous to which you can ask questions, including voice questions and commands, and it answers back to you? So, ancient technology and modern applications. In modern magic mirrors, we see other countries we can communicate with our, our friends living thousands of kilometers away or we can uh, even observe other planets, right? It is curious that recently um, English 
scientists have invented a modern magic mirror that allows you to see in the future, at least your own. You can click on the button and see how you will look years later. The display is created using miniature cameras that shoot you in different projections, then the images are processed and with the help of a special program, your hypothetical image is created in the future. However, some will see a wrinkled or swollen old people in the mirror, while others will see youngish and good-looking elderly people. Well, the fact is that the magic mirror is equipped with various sensors that collect information about you and your health. And based on this data, the program adds various touches to your portrait, and you can see with your own eyes <coughs> what um, your harmful or useful habits lead to in the future. The designers of the magic mirror warn that if you lead an unhealthy lifestyle, uh, what you see can shock you and therefore do not recommend using their inventions to people with a delicate nervous system. But everyone else can admire or have fun looking at how they will look in a couple of decades. Who knows what other similar inventions will appear in the future. It is quite possible that soon we will have magic mirrors that will tell us personally that we're in a somewhat inferior shape based on comparison with millions of other users and conduct quite meaningful dialogues with us. It is quite possible that the mirror broken by the jealous Kiev queen was some kind of a similar device on which it was quite possible to watch her husband who went on a long mission <clears throat> and failed to stay uh, dedicated or loyal to her where did such devices come from in the distant past? It is possible that there were already high developed civilizations on our planet in which there were some similar multimedia devices that were perceived by the next generations as magical. It is possible that the technology was lost and humans that came about later just copied or uh, retold tales but couldn't produce anything like that anymore and i'll be returning to this theme more and more in my videos who knows maybe something will happen to our world our technologies will be lost and miraculously the surviving uh, people will perceive the single surviving devices of our time as divine artifacts and decorate their altars with iphones and ipads or whatever technology will be created in the future. I want to thank you for your support and those who can please support my research. You will see the links in the description to this video. Please subscribe to my channel and please tell others. Thank you.